When entering manual and automatic journal entries, there are three elements that need to be defined to complete the transaction. The first is to define the journal codes. Journal codes are used to identify the source journal for your journal entries. For example, transactions coming from the purchasing module might use a purchasing journal code. Second is to define the document type, also known as the entry type. This will determine the type of journal used for posting transactions. For example, receiving stock might generate a journal entry that uses a document type of STK that references the purchasing or stock journal code. The last is to customize the journal entry transaction screen to meet your company's needs. It defines the journal entry screen's layout and which fields to display or hide. Let's take a look at preparing your system for journal entries by setting up journal codes, document types, and customizing journal entry transactions. To enter journal codes, select the Journal Codes function under the Common Data menu, the General Ledger Accounting Tables function block. To add a new journal code, click New in the right-hand panel. Enter your journal code. It can be up to five characters in length. Enter in a description. And a short description. The journal code type is used to group journals based on common characteristics. If you're going to select Treasury, you have to assign it to a cash account. Miscellaneous Operations 1 and 2, which are Entries 4 and 5, are used for general accounting. Carry Forward is used for year-end carry forward processes. Types 8, 9, and 10 are reserved for analytical accounting. I'm going to set mine up for general accounting and select Miscellaneous Operations 1. To create my code, I click Create in the right-hand panel. To enter document types, select the Document Types function in the Setup menu under the Financials block. To add a new document type, click New in the right-hand panel. Then give it your entry type code. It can be up to five characters in length. Enter a description. And then give it a short description. You'll want to associate it with a default journal code. I'm going to use the one that I just created. And then I'll also associate it with a sequence number which will be used to create my document numbering. I need to make sure it is active and then I need to determine my journal categories. I want this to be used in both actual and simulated journal entries. I then determine what types of journal I can use my document type with. I'm going to authorize mine for all journal types except carry forward. I'm also going to determine which ledgers I can use. I'm going to leave mine authorized for all the ledgers that I have created for my system and then I go ahead and click Create. This has created my document type. The last step is to customize the Journal Entry Transaction screen. You will select the Journal Entry Transactions under the Setup Menu Financials block. To enter a new Journal Entry Transaction screen, click New in the right hand panel. Enter in your transaction code, and then a short description. You want to make sure it's active so you can use it. Then you'll come down and select what ledgers this transaction entry screen can be used with. I'm going to use the legal and the analytical ledgers. If I want to see the transactions that I have created in the left list, I must check View Left List. I can determine the number of fixed columns I want when entering in my grid. 
I will select 2. I can enter in the number of currency rates that I will be using. I have up to a maximum of 5 currency rates. I will leave mine at 1. And then I select my entry type. I can choose between column, row, and tab. Column, the ledger types will be used in a column. Row places constraints on what ledgers are being associated with this entry type. And tab is used for inquiries only. I'm going to leave mine set at column. The header tab displays what fields are available and I can determine whether they are hidden, displayed, or entered for the user. The lines tab determines what fields are in the lines grid. I can choose once again whether they are hidden, entered, or displayed. I also have the ability to determine whether they are on the form or not on the form by clicking yes or no in the forms column. Once I have my screen customized to the way I want, I go ahead and click create. This creates my new entry transaction screen. In this lesson, you have learned that to enter journal entries, you first need to define journal codes to represent the source journals. Then define document types to reference journal codes, document sequence numbers, journal authorizations, as well as management settings. And finally, how to customize the journal entry transaction screen to meet your company's needs.